Hi everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and in this video I want to talk about creating the Prisma Flow Diagram. So this is something that is not complicated, but it can be a little bit tedious depending upon the approach that you use to actually create it. There are also some software programs out there that will help you do this, um, but I tend to use either the Word document or uh, I actually just found out about this Shiny application software that I want to show you. Um, and these are a couple ways that you can create this flow diagram for free. So as you can see, we're just on the Prisma website right now and they have links to Word documents so if I just want to show you what this looks like real quick when we open this up and you can see they have this really nice format here where all you have to do is input the numbers right so if you search databases you can put however many you want etc but as you start filling this out um, depending upon your preferences you may find this requires a lot of editing, um, just depending upon what you do. So for, for me, for example, I never search registers because they're not used in my field, but I do end up searching a large number of databases. And so what I end up doing is having a separate database for each row, and it just becomes a little bit tedious to end up writing those things out. So recently when I was on the Prisma website, I saw this link down here to creating the flow diagrams with a shiny app and to me that just sounds awesome so of course you know I had to click and find out more and when you do it's going to bring you to the evidence synthesis hackathon website and if you scroll down here they have a link to access the online tool and so I played around with this a little bit and it is so cool so what this does is this is going to help you create your prisma flow diagram and it does it just through simple point and click interface so here we are on the prisma flow diagram page and you can see this information over here on the right this looks a little bit different than the template i showed you before this is just another option but it's not an option that's common in my field for actually finding things so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and the way i get rid of that is here under this under other searches for studies all i got to do is click not included so I also mentioned that I don't have registers in my uh, field, so we're going to get rid of that soon. But what I want to point out is this individual databases. We do search individual databases in my field, so I'm going to actually hit include. And you can see what that did there is it built in database one, two, three, etc. And it also added some lines down here where I can fill this in. So here under databases, we're going to pretend like I searched three databases. And then I'm actually going to get rid of the registers because I don't use that. So Next, I want to actually replace my database names. Uh, I'm going to say I searched academic search complete. And let's say it found a thousand studies. And then my second database, I'm going to pretend like this was ACM. And I'm going to say it found, I don't know, maybe 50 studies. And then last but not least, oops, I forgot the semicolon there. There we go. Last but not least, we're going to search IEEE explore. And let's say that located, oh, I don't know, another 50 studies. Okay, so here you can see that's automatically updated that for me. That's all looking good. So now let's get to the duplicate removal. Let's say that I removed 500 duplicates. And then I didn't have any automatically excluded and I didn't have any other exclusion reasons. Okay, perfect. Look, this is looking really nice, isn't it? And it's so easy to do. Point and click. I love it. Okay, record screened. So. If we were to add all this up, we'd see we had 1,100 studies, and if we take 500 away from that, that means we screened 600. So we'll just put that in. Uh, records excluded in this first phase, oh, I don't know, let's say 500, because I'm just making things up. How many records were sought? 100. How many were not retrieved? We'll say 10. So how many did we assess? 90. And then, uh, as you can see, we come down to reasons that studies were excluded during the full text screening phase. So here we could type in all of these reasons and all of these numbers. I'll just type in a number so that you can see that it does update in real time. I'm not going to actually change out what these reasons are. Um, but at the end of the day, down here under new studies, we might end up with, I don't know, let's say 20. And then I'm going to get rid of new reports. And look, so now we have our beautiful Prisma diagram. Um, and this is basically done, right? Super, super easy. So what can we do? Well, what we can do next is simply download it and they give us a lot of different options to download it. So I find that now that I know about this, application. I love it. This is what I'm going to be using from here forward. Um, I'll just show you real quickly what the PDF uh, works like. So number one, they want you to cite it as we always should. And number two, our PDF opens and it looks just like this, right? Beautiful Prisma diagram, all complete in the format that we need it to be in. So 
that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. This is super simple, and depending upon uh, what you have, you can. It's it's also very versatile. So if you want to add in previous studies, you can do that. If you want to add in registers, you can do that. If you want to have other searches for studies, you can do that. It's a very very great tool, and it's very helpful. So um, this is something that I am going to be using a lot more in the future now that I know it exists, and I wanted to show it to you guys because I find it much easier to use than the Word document. So thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.